we want to solve the linear inequality in one variable, express the solution using inequality notation, using a graph, and also using interval notation. We solve a linear inequality in one variable just like we solve an equation in one variable, except if we multiply or divide by a negative, we must reverse the inequality symbol. So looking at the inequality here, we first want to clear the parentheses by distributing positive four. So we'd have 36x is less than or equal to four times negative seven x is negative 28x plus four times 32 is equal to 128. Notice how we have x terms on both sides, but because we want them on the same side, let's go ahead and add 28x to both sides of the equation. 36x plus 28x is equal to 64x. So we have 64x is less than or equal to negative 28x plus 28x is zero. So we have less than or equal to 128. And now for our last step, to solve for x, we divide both sides by 64. 64 divided by 64 simplifies the one. One times x is just x. So we have x is less than or equal to 128 divided by 64 is equal to positive two. Notice how here we divided by a positive 64, and therefore we did not reverse the inequality symbol. It's only if we multiply or divide by a negative that we reverse the inequality symbol. So this is our solution using inequality notation. So x is less than or equal to positive two, but using the homework system, we enter this in from the keyboard as x less than equals two. If we click the preview button, we will see it's interpreted as x is less than or equal to two. And now we'll go ahead and graph this interval, and we'll graph it two ways. We'll first graph it using points. Notice how for x less than or equal to two, because of the equal part, two is included. So to show two is in the interval, we want to plot a closed point or a closed dot using our dot tool. So we'll click on the dot tool, click on positive two, and then because x is less than or equal to positive two, we use a line segment tool and graph to the left. Again, this is a closed point. It would be open if this endpoint was not included. As we move to the left of the number line, we are approaching negative infinity. This will be helpful for interval notation. The second way to graph the same interval is to use rounded parentheses or square brackets based upon whether the endpoints are included or not. Notice here the endpoint is included, so to show the endpoint is included, we use a square bracket, and because we're graphing to the left, we place a square bracket on the number line opening to the left, like this, and then we graph to the left. If the endpoint was not included, we'd use a rounded parenthesis here. And now for the interval notation, to the left, the interval approaches negative infinity, and the right endpoint is positive two, because the interval does include positive two, we use a square bracket here. Then for positive and negative infinity, we always use a rounded parenthesis, which would look like this. This is our solution expressed using interval notation. And in our homework system, we can find the infinity symbol using the equation tool, or from the keyboard, we can enter two lowercase o's, which indicate infinity. It's always a good idea to use the preview buttons so that we're clear how the system interprets our entries. I hope you found this helpful.